In my last video, I showed that the impacts of climate change are hitting people harder and faster than expected, but that the pace of climate change is entirely in line with predictions. But there is one particular exception to that rule. Because in my line of work, we are used to being surprised, often unpleasantly, by the findings of new Antarctic research. Ice sheet losses are already tracking along with worst case scenarios of climate change. And several pieces of new research have been published recently, painting an increasingly dire picture. They show that Antarctica may be warming faster than we thought. We may have underestimated important feedbacks that lead to polar amplification. And that if the current level of warming continues, ice sheet tipping points could be initiated. I'm Ella, a polar scientist with a PhD in Antarctic climate change, here to help you decipher these scary findings and figure out what they mean for all of us. Antarctica is an enigmatic and rapidly shifting place. There is still so much to learn about our frozen continent, which is why things can still take us by surprise. Compared to the size of Antarctica, we have just a handful of long-term records of temperature, snowfall, and other important climate indicators. Although we now have lots of automatic weather stations, most of the long-term data are collected at staffed stations that were established in the 1950s and which are scattered around the edges of the continent. And there's a huge data desert in the West Antarctic because it's so incredibly remote and inaccessible. Getting a handle on exactly how much temperature varies naturally requires lots of temperature information over a very long time, and we just don't have that. This is partly why it's so hard to detect the influence of human activity on Antarctica against the noise of year-to-year -year ups and downs. It's like trying to have a phone conversation at a rave. So plenty of scientists have used more creative methods to turn the volume down on that noise, in this new paper, the authors use a long-term reconstruction based on ice cores to detect temperature patterns and trends. And one of their main findings is that climate models may be underestimating the impact of polar amplification on temperature in Antarctica. If you've heard of polar amplification, you've probably heard it in the context of the Arctic. It's the reason that the Arctic is warming four times faster than the rest of the planet and involves reinforcing feedbacks that amplify change in the polar regions. Scientists thought that polar amplification doesn't really happen in Antarctica because it's a more complex environment than the Arctic. But this study pours cold water on that idea, suggesting that warming is underestimated because models fail to capture crucial atmospheric patterns that drive temperature and snowfall and amplify change at the pole. In important regions like the Antarctic Peninsula and West Antarctic, model estimates of warming are half those found in this study. And as the authors say, this has big implications for sea level rise. Remember when I said this? Ice sheet losses are already tracking along with worst case scenarios of climate change. This could explain part of why ice losses are tracking along with the worst case, while global average temperatures are tracking along a lower trajectory. A lot of Antarctica's contribution comes from the West Antarctic, which is chucking ice into the ocean at the moment like a toddler having a tantrum. And we know there's a pretty scary tipping point in the West Antarctic because the ice sheet sits on top of bedrock that's mostly below sea level, meaning that if melting pushes the ice sheet enough, it could initiate runaway change that would add over three and a half meters to global sea level. In fact, I made a video a while ago about the tipping point in the West Antarctic. Check it out up here if you like. It's a region of rapid change, especially centered around the area containing the Pine Island and Thwaites glaciers. Despite being pretty minuscule in the grand scheme of things, these two fast-flowing glaciers contribute around 5% of current global sea level rise. Thwaites is especially important because scientists think it could be a keystone glacier for the whole region, meaning that if Thwaites goes, eventually the whole West Antarctic ice sheet could be dragged into the sea. A couple of years ago, Thwaites was all over the headlines when researchers presented some work suggesting that the ice shelf in front of the glacier might collapse within a decade. That would be significant because the ice shelf holds the glacier back, preventing it from galloping into the ocean. If the ice shelf collapses, so the theory went, that could be the beginning of a cascade of events that would result in the complete loss of Thwaites and potentially the entire West Antarctic ice sheet. And satellite data shows that Thwaites ice shelf looks ready to go. Just look at this tweet from ice shelf remote sensing expert Adrian Luckman. 
Sounds like a nightmare scenario, but before you head to your bunker, let me tell you two things. Firstly, it seems like the demise of the ice shelf might not be the firing shot in that cascade of ice loss that it was assumed to be. More recent studies suggest that the loss of the Thwaites ice shelf might not have that much of an impact on the glacier's speed and therefore sea level rise. Secondly, even if it were, these changes would take centuries to unfold. The process that we're scared of here, where the loss of an ice shelf frees the glacier to flow unrestricted into the ocean, is part of what's known as marine ice shelf instability, or MISI. It's one of two processes implicated in theories about the tipping point in West Antarctica. And two new papers have good and bad news about it. The good news is that the authors detect no evidence of MISI so far. But the bad news is that it could happen under current levels of warming. The difficult thing about talking about polar tipping points is that they happen on a completely different timescale to what we might assume from the term alone. That's actually something that me and Jason Box spoke about up in this video. Most people assume when talking about tipping points that change would occur rapidly over the course of months or years perhaps, but ice changes at a famously glacial pace. Even if an irreversible threshold in the West Antarctic was crossed, it would still take hundreds of years to fully tip. Ice sheets respond very slowly to change. These scientists showed that although there's no evidence yet that Antarctica has tipped into a new state, it could be tipped if current conditions, that is the 1.2 degrees of warming we've already caused, persist. Which means that even with no further warming, and I'll leave you to fill in the blanks about how likely that is, West Antarctica could still undergo irreversible change over the next few centuries. The scenario they paint is a slow motion car crash that would cause the West Antarctic ice sheet to completely collapse somewhere between 300 and 500 years from now. In short, it would be triggered by our actions, but the consequences would be suffered by our great, 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 great grandchildren. The authors call this committed tipping, but they also stress that we are not locked into this fate of slow but certain long-term ice loss yet. Because the flip side of ice sheet's slow response times is that there is still time to act. If we turn down the dial on the factors that lead to ice loss, especially ocean warming, we can minimize the effects of climate change on ice sheets and reduce the risk of tipping the West Antarctic. The only way to turn down the dial is by taking ambitious climate action to cut emissions and remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. It sounds like a tall order, but it's so worth it to restore our climate and avert some of these frankly terrifying consequences. In Antarctica, things may be changing faster than expected. We aren't at the point of irreversible change yet, but we're getting close. Thanks for watching. As ever, thanks to my Patreon subscribers for your support. And if you want to join them to help me make more content like this, you can sign up at the link below. See you next time.